Today I am talking about humility. This virtue is one that I really struggle with because the opposite of humility is pride. And that is something that I'm working on, but it's something that I, I don't like when people humiliate me or embarrass me and I never want to be seen as um, less than I am. And so this is one of those virtues that keeps coming up and I thought I would explore some more about it. Humility in a higher and ethical sense is that by which a man has a modest estimate of his own worth and submits himself to others. According to this meaning, no man can humiliate another, but only in self. And this he can do properly only when aided by divine grace. So in order to be humble, we need divine grace. We need God to help us. The virtue of humility may be defined a quality by which a person considering his own defects has a lowly opinion of himself and willingly submits himself to God and to others for God's sake. This definition really struck me because it is a actionable definition. It's saying that if you are humble, you submit yourself to God and to others. You are submitting to what God wants for you and you are helping others through your gifts as opposed to shining them out and saying, Hey, look at me, look at me. <laughs> so that seems very actionable. I like that. Humility is annexed to the virtue of temperance as a potential part because temperance includes all those virtues that refrain or express the inordinate movements or desires and appetites. So the desire that would contrast humility would be the desire for pride, the desire to be esteemed, the desire um, to be preferred and all that stuff. So it's, it falls under temperance, humility. Humility removes obstacles of faith, namely pride. And St. Thomas says, it removes pride and makes a man subject to and a fit recipient of grace. So if you're a humble, you're an open vessel for grace. According to the words of St. James, God resisteth the proud and give his grace to the humble. That's really nice. That's James 4, 6. St. John Vianney said this, who can contemplate the immensity of a God without humbling himself into dust at the thought that God created heaven out of nothing and that with one word he could turn heaven and earth into nothing again? A God who is so great and whose power is boundless, a God filled with every perfection, a God with his never-ending eternity, his great justice, his providence, who rules everything so wisely and looks after everything with such care, and we a mere nothing." How can you not be humble after reading that? Well, <laughs> in the imitation of Christ, this is written. Do not think yourself better than others, lest perhaps you be accounted worse before God. Who knows what is in a man? Do not take pride in your good deeds, for God's judgments differ from those of men, and what pleases them often displeases him. If there is good in you, see more good in others so that you may remain humble. It does no harm to esteem yourself less than anyone else, but it is very harmful to think yourself better than everyone. The humble live in continuous peace, while in the hearts of the proud are envy and frequent anger. That is so true. Let me reread that. The humble live in continuous peace, while in the hearts of the proud are envy and frequent anger. So pride really ends up injuring yourself. It, it harms, it's very harmful to think of yourself as better than others. It really does injure your own well-being. 
In Matthew 11:29, Jesus said to his disciples, Learn of me because I am meek and humble of heart and you shall find rest to your souls. I wanted to close this little video about humility with the litany of humility, which for somebody that struggles with pride and you know, a little bit of that, this prayer was really difficult for me to swallow. At first, when I first heard it, I was like, oh, I don't know about this prayer. <laughs> but um, the more and more I've gotten to know it, the better I like it because it's asking you to, it, the prayer is asking to free you from the grips of pride and vanity. It's not saying that you are not worthwhile or, you know, that God didn't make you lovely with gifts and talents. It's trying to free us from the grips of the, the love of those talents and gifts and desires and vanities. So um, let's, if you know it, you know, if you follow along, it's, I put it down there. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. O oh, Jesus, meek and humble of heart, hear me. From the desire of being esteemed, Deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being loved, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being extolled, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being honored, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being praised, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being preferred to others, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being consulted, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being approved, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being despised, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being humiliated, deliver me, Jesus. I think he made me mess that line up on purpose. From the fear of suffering rebukes, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being calumniated, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being forgotten, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being ridiculed, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being wronged, Deliver me, Jesus, from the fear of being suspected. Deliver me, Jesus, that others may be loved more than I. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it, that others may be esteemed more than I. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it, that in the opinion of the world, others may increase and I may decrease. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it, that others may be chosen and I set aside. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it, that others may be praised and I unnoticed. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it, that others may be preferred to me in everything. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it, that others may become holier than I, provided I become as holy as I should. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That last line of the prayer is my absolute favorite. And I'm gonna, it's worth repeating, so I'm going to say it one more time. That others may become holier than I, provided that I may become as holy as I should. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. God, please help <laughs> all of us on our emptying of pride and working towards our um, open hearts that we may be open to your graces help us remove those obstacles of faith and help us to be humble and to love you and to be ordered to do your will and desire that give us the grace to desire that and not think of ourselves amen in the, name of the father and the son and the holy spirit amen thank you for watching this video this this topic is super close to my heart because it is literally what i struggle with so much i think i have a fear that if i am humble that i will get taken advantage of and as a woman and a minority, 
growing up, it was constantly pushed to take care of yourself and to make sure that nobody takes advantage of you. So there's a defense mechanism going on there and I'm working really hard to release that defense mechanism um, because God isn't of this world and he is above us. He is infinite. And to order my heart to follow him without reservation or without walls being put up. So I pray many blessings on you guys. Or I don't know if I'm, I'm sure there's others working on this with me, but I feel like this is one of my big ones. So I wanted to dive into and learn a little bit more about humility and read a few more things about it. So I hope something I read was useful to you. I know this was really useful to me and <laughs> I'm going to think on these things for a while. All right. We'll see you soon. Goodbye.